up, y'all? Rap Critic here. Let's talk about Lil Durk. Now, Dirk came up around the early 2010 Chicago trap explosion, where the appeal was that they were the most gutterish MCs spitting about the harsh realities of their struggling hometown. I mean, you know, totally different from every other era of gangster rap I know, but hey, it's where the eyes were at the time, and it felt like they were serving as the representation of what that gritty modern reality sounded like. No, I think I've always been clear about the belief that you can make a song about any topic, even the same one over and over and over again, as long as you have interesting wordplay and the ability to make it sound fresh every time. But, well, getting to Dirk specifically, you know, I've tried to give the dude a chance musically, but I can't ever say it's come off as anything to ever write home about. The problem with guys like this, unfortunately, is that if you're just looking for an artist to listen to and you're not already invested in them, the sad auto-tuned gangsta diary raps begin to feel like, you know, lots of rappers are doing this exact thing, so what is so special about what you're saying versus any other rapper who's telling a similar story? But that's where showmanship begins to really count for something. I mean, guys like Young Thug and Lil Uzi Vert, for instance, you know, not mind-blowing lyricists for the most part, but they do have a personal flair and uniqueness that at least makes me understand why someone would listen to them. But when listening through Dirk's catalog, after a while, it kind of came off less like there's something unique to him and more like maybe he was just one of the first ones with this specific sound, so he just kind of got grandfathered into the mainstream relevance by virtue of how he's actually managed to stick around for a bit. But even so, I couldn't help but notice how boilerplate his presence on the tracks were, to the point where, as I was listening to his latest material, I found myself more appreciative of the guest rappers that I didn't care much about previously. I could appreciate the bright yellow splashes of Young Thug's sporadic sensibilities like a Jackson Pollock painting, or the mahogany brown deadpan of a 21 Savage, the Stephen Wright of the rap game. But with Dirk, it, it always feels like the same basic modern rapper template, made even more distinguishable by the constant autotune. Now, to his credit, despite the ever-present sad robot gangster diary raps, dude definitely plays ball with industry politics and tones it down a bit for the hit songs he's accrued. However, as much as I want to give him credit for that, since it's not something a lot of his peers have managed to do, it's hard to shake the feeling that his previous chart space stealers like Internet Sensation and Broadway Girls don't feel like genuine efforts. They feel more like just going through the motions to fit the bare minimum requirements of a pop radio hit. That said, his latest song seems to be a bit of a departure from all that, starting with an unexpected J. Cole intro verse to kick things off in a new attitude. And look, I, I get that he's doing the fourth wall break, and I'm rapping in real time about what it is they're doing in the studio, but I don't know, something about kicking off the earnest face turn record by just blatantly saying, hey guys, here comes the positive rap song now, it, it, it makes it seem like a bit of a pose. It doesn't drag down the song experience too much, it's just that I can't shake the vibe that a community service box was ticked off during the song's creation. And even so, I sense a little reluctance in J. Cole being once more tapped to do another uplift the community positive guest rap verse. Lately, I just want to show up and body some shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh man, I just wanted to do some fun lyrical craziness on some ignorant Dirk track, but fine, I guess I can do a positive social commentary verse again. And I can't help but notice the obvious respectable rap song signifiers being deployed here. Like, it's certainly a little suspicious that J. Cole's parts seem to be wrapped around the one Lil Durk verse, really making Cole's name do the heavy lifting in terms of scoring some cheap points from the respectable rap song playlist. Oh, and right next to that cheat code is the sappy children's choir plug-in. Like, I have to take this song seriously. Don't you hear the important sounding chunky piano chords and the aspirational voices of the youth? And here's the thing, it actually does get a little traction the first time you hear it when it's right after the bit where Cole mentions getting hassled by the police. Remember when cops are rats talking out my ass, boy, you ain't shit but a bitch with a badge. Because when it's coming fresh off the intro bars about facing off against the cops, it, you can kind of get what they're going for. But by the time you hear it detached from that later on, every line just sounds like these overblown sentiments from someone who's just so sure everyone is a hater who's just rooting against their success. It's the kind of rhetoric I'd barely believe for most people I hear it from, much less a bunch of kids. No. A hook about a bunch of kids singing about how they've been persecuted all their lives, it just feels a little unearned. Like, what do you mean all your life? You just started existing barely a decade ago. And for a good chunk of it, you were getting your clothes changed by someone else. All this time. All this time. All These kids sound like they genuinely think there's some cabal of supervillains rubbing their gloved hands in concern over the thoughts and actions of 10 year olds. Well, I mean, other than people who work in children's marketing departments. That said, though, despite the fact that I know it's going to be right back to the regularly scheduled programming of gruesome gangster rap shit right after this track is done, I can't help but take note of the genuine moments of vulnerability that I could appreciate in the verse that actually give some credence to the hook. 
Like here, when he brings up the systemic oppression he's dealt with based on prejudice and growing up automatically disadvantaged. In fact, it's fascinating how he brings up legit issues that guys with criminal pasts who still need to defend themselves have to deal with. But the system ain't give me a choice. There's some people that's still unemployed. I know a fellow who's trying to get forward. Like, yeah, how do you thread the needle of trying to make sure dangerous criminals don't get access to firearms while also not overlooking people who paid their debt to society but are still living in the shitty conditions that require them to still protect themselves? I know I don't have an answer to that one. That's a hard fucking question. And I do have to say, I admire the way he handles the anti-drug message in a legitimately human fashion. I know some kids wanna hurt they Stop trying to take drugs, I refer to myself. It's in how he twists the perspective inwards to say that he's actually talking to himself when he was saying the previous words, directly communicating the reality of how heart-wrenchingly difficult it can be to deal with addiction in a way that makes his demands not just empty words from someone who doesn't get it, but like a genuine emotional fourth wall break to reach out to the people who are also trying to deal with their own willpower to master their dependencies. So he might not exactly be matching Cole in lyrical complexity, but there's definitely some emotional power he's backing in there. Now, of course, Cole definitely comes through in his second Fuller verse. And how he takes on the tragedy factor of the modern internet attention economy that rewards promising artists, but only after a tragically early death. These days, seen rappers be dying way before they even getting their shine. I never even heard of nobody. To somebody murder nobody. Like, for real, th this verse gets a little too fourth wall breaky as a guy whose job it is to talk in between these segments. This shit wicked to get their names buzzing. Some niggas just gotta go lay in a tomb. And media thirsty for clicks. Like, no, I, yeah, no, you're right. That's a, that's a really good point. This is just sad. I, I, I don't know what to do other than just agree with you here. I, I mean, I mean, I feel like I'm playing a therapist more than critiquing a rap verse right now. Don't even rap, I just fit to you. I'd rather that than an interview most days. Like, oh shit, I uh, should have brought a notepad or something. But he ends on a bittersweet but hopeful note. I pray all of my dogs stay so paid, and the only thing to kill him is OA. Then to play us out, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the children's AI voice choir. <laughs> Overall, though, I I'd say I give this song a 3.5 out of 5. Honestly, I was hoping for a more fair trade-off of verses between the two. You know, if you're going for heartfelt, it'd be nice if it actually sounded like these guys like touched base on their verses beforehand, you know? It could have made it more like a dialogue between two rappers with survivor's remorse, you know? There's a conversation happening here, but the song doesn't take enough time to get that really progressing as far as it should, but there are definitely some glimpses of strong lyrical moments that I do have to take note of. As it stands, though, their chemistry isn't exactly the best blend, and the production's a little sappy, but I can appreciate what they're going for and respect the effort. So... Quite literally, it, it reaches the bar of respectable rap song. So I guess congratulations, you did it. Gold star, well, silver star, let's not go crazy, but. <laughs> well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like, cause it helps. Comment if you have something to say, because that's what helps even more. And hit the subscribe button, cause that's what helps the most. And if you want to support the show, of course, that's ko-fi.com slash rapcritic for one-time donations and patreon.com slash rapcritic for ongoing donations where you can see episodes early and join the Rap Critic Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. And now we have a going tier where if you're a patron, you can now get all Kofi requests half off. So, you know, get with it, act like you want it. And until next time, I'm the Rap Critic. You don't have to like my opinion, but social commentary doesn't automatically give your song a pass, okay? You still gotta earn that shit, goddammit. I'm just saying.